What up, nerds? Welcome back to the channel. For this super easy processing tutorial today, we'll be using my friend Josh's Stack of the Lion Nebula. Um, we'll also be using Starnet++ version 2 and Gradient Exterminator. Gradient Exterminator has a free trial, and Starnet is just free. I will provide links down in the description, and there should be a link down for the raw file stack as well, so that you can follow along with the exact same data. So, the first thing we need to do... No, that's not what we need to do. So the first, first thing that we need to do is open up our stack in Photoshop. This is our autosave right out of Deep Sky Stacker. I just renamed it Lion Nebula for the purpose of the video and finding it. So we will open that with Photoshop. <clears throat> All right. So, for this tutorial, I will tell you everything that I do, and I will not be skipping any of my steps, because it is best to know exactly what buttons people are hitting. I know a lot of people skip over that, and I do not want to do that. So, first thing that we're going to do, I always have it on, on Zoom as a default, because I like to make it fit on the screen. I don't know, I'm just weird like that. Go to Image Mode. We want to switch it to 16 bits switch it to exposure and gamma and OK. Now we're going to be keeping an eye on our histogram over here so you'll notice the histogram is a little bit high so the first thing that we're going to do image mode adjustment we're going to go to levels and you can take this far left dark um, level here and you can move that up you don't want to touch the the data there so get it about as close as you can You'll notice the background's darkening. That's what we want to do. We're bringing the histogram back down there so that we can uh, start fresh from a dark field. So right away, we're going to go to Image, Adjustment. We're going to go to Curves. Now, you can be doing all this in separate layers. A lot of people will. I'm not going to be doing that because then I'll have 50 layers open and my computer will melt down. So we're just going to do it like this way. Uh, so we got our histogram right here. We're just going to take this. We're going to give it a nice hefty stretch. I'm going to put a point right up here and then I'm going to lower this right here. And what that is going to do, that is going to back the histogram off of the right side so that we don't blow out any highlights. And we're going to be doing that with most of our curves. So, uh, okay, here we go. And you can already start to see a little bit of the nebula popping out here. And we're going to do one more stretch. Adjustment, curves. This time, though, we're going to start down here at the lower end. We're going to drop that down just a little bit, making sure that we're not dropping down above where the data starts. So we're, we're free there. And then we're going to go right here. We're going to lift this one up, give it a little bit of contrast. And once again, we're going to put a point there roll that off so that we don't clip any whites and okay now at this point we're about ready for starnet so what we're gonna do we're gonna go to file and we don't want to just hit save because that'll overwrite our original stack and we don't want to do that so we're gonna do save as lion nebula light stretch save uh, no compression okay so now that that's saved, what we're going to do is we're going to take that, we're going to go back into our folder here. Let me get there. Okay, so we have our light stretch here. This, you're going to cut that, and we're going to drop that into our Starnet folder, because to do Starnet, you have to have it in 16-bit, and you have to have it lightly stretched, and the file has to be in the folder. So you're going to drop this file right here into the Starnet folder, and then run Starnet. I've already done that to save time, and that would be this starless image right here. So we're going to close that. So right now we got this. And what we're going to do now, since we've run our Starnet, is open. And now we're going to open our starless version that we got out of Starnet. Now we're in a whole nother tab. Uh, once again, 
fitted on the screen and now we're going to be able to process this nebula free of any stars so first thing I want to do is check my levels eh, it's okay they're looking all right so we're gonna go ahead and uh, uh, start off with a curve once again I always like to give it that contrast so bring it down just a little bit go up a little bit and put your point up here and roll it off so that we don't blow out any highlights and you'll see that I like to do a series of small stretches. I never do one large stretch or two large stretches. I probably will do like 10 or 15 small ones. And uh, we'll go back into the curves. Once again, down, up. All right, I'm liking how that's looking. But now we're, we're over here looking at our histogram. And you're seeing that the colors are starting to get a little separated. So what we're going to do is go back into adjustments and go back to levels. So you can see that the blue is way high and the red is starting to fatten out. So what we're gonna do is uh, go down to the blue. Just gonna move that up. And where you see these little dots at the end here, that's not real data. So you can actually cut through that. Just don't get to the solid part here and you'll be fine. Uh, but now we're seeing we got a little bit of a green cast. So we're gonna have to bring that green down too and you see the green is up a little higher than everything else so bring that green down now you're seeing these histograms start to line up just a little bit more and we'll check the red just to see looks like we can bring the red down a little bit all right that's that's looking all right for now so here we go we're gonna go back into adjustments curves again drop that down just a hair and bring this up over here now if we go too high you never want you never want that line to be hitting the top of the the curve box there um, you're starting to blow everything out and you can see some nasty things starting to appear so bring that back down we're doing another another very subtle small stretch and once again keeping an eye on our histogram we're just gonna put a little mark there roll that down just a bit all right that's looking pretty good Okay, so then about what I'd want to do about here is um, you, you, you see see some of this stuff here. Um, I believe the moon was out the night that he was shooting this, and you can kind of see some light pollution gradients around the edges. And this is where Gradient Exterminator is, in my opinion, worth every penny that, that it costs. Um, you can do this all manually, of course, but uh, uh, this, this saves a ton of time, and it works really well. So we go to Filter. RC Astro, Gradient Exterminator. I usually keep it on medium and medium. That seems to work the best. And just run it. And boom. So we're much more smoothed out. And you notice that the histogram tightens up quite a bit when you do that too. Um, so now that we've done that, what we're going to do is go into... Maybe I'll give it one more stretch just to see how it's going to look. So we'll go back into curves. Once again, drop that down bring this one back up I think that's about as far as we're gonna be able to stretch this nebula um, the more data that you collect the more you can stretch it this one was a few hours but like I said it was a moon filled night and um, it's not the purest of dark sky data so uh, we've gone about as far as we can go now and uh, we're just gonna have to call that good so we're gonna go into, back into our filters and one of my favorite favorite things of all time is this camera raw filter uh, you can take care of so many things and fix so much stuff in here uh, first thing I always like to do is go to the auto white balance just to check usually I keep it as shot but you can try auto sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't auto I don't really like that so we're gonna go back to how we we did it ourselves now here sometimes I'll check and see if raising the exposure does anything and it definitely is brightening up that nebulous but you don't want to go too far you go too far you, you get out of control real fast so maybe 0.3 is is good and sometimes you'll actually be pulling that back down but uh, 0.3 for this one is pretty good um, I always like to give it a little bit of contrast uh, we're keeping an eye on the histogram at the top of the screen now to make sure that we don't blow out highlights or clip any darks so uh, it looks like we got a little space to play with so we can actually drop those blacks down just a little bit 
If you go too far, you'll see you start to clip. But you want to go just far enough to where you're not clipping, but you get start getting a little bit darker on the sky there. All right. I never want to do texture. Um, we can try the clarity just a little bit. You go too far, once again, you're going to start looking fake and bring out a bunch of nasty stuff. So usually just very subtly with a little bit of clarity, maybe a little bit of dehaze. The more dehaze you do, it'll drop the blacks down, so you want to be careful not to clip any data there. And I usually go very subtly with just a touch of vibrance and a touch of saturation. It's real easy to make your images look fake and like they're made in Microsoft Paint or something. So we just very subtle there. Um, what we can do next is go into detail never touch the sharpening I find it uh, sharpens all the noise and makes your images look like crap so never touch sharpening but noise reduction will go all the way and you can really see how uh, that background noise smooths out of course you don't want to go all the way I'm just doing that for the example what I would do is go about maybe about 30 35 ish or so then a little color noise reduction I usually go about the same so maybe about 35 on the color reduction too and that's about all we're going to be able to do for now with that so okay and now we've got our process nebula mostly um, still a little bit noisy but there's not a lot we can do with that and now we go back to our other tab where we have this one here and I would like to stretch this one out just a little bit more so we got curves I'm going to bring that down, bring this up, once again, put your point up at the top, rolling that off to keep, uh, keep the histogram from blowing out any highlights, especially on these stars, because that's exactly what we're trying not to do. Okay, now what we're going to do here is we're going to go down and click this little plus button, which makes an extra layer. The layer is automatically selected when you click the button, so don't have to worry about that. But then we go over to our starless version, and what we're going to do is we're going to select everything by hitting Control A. So now we're all selected. Um, now that everything is selected, Control C to copy it. We go back over to our star version, and we're we're on this new layer that we made and we're going to hit control V to paste that picture in there. So now we have our star version and our starless version. Okay, so we're almost there. Um, now that they're both together though, um, you can see some of this nastiness at the bottom here and that's just some stacking artifacts and whatnot. So we're going to go up here to the crop button. Um, we're just going to bring it up to get rid of that ugly stuff. I'll probably bring it in here to crop some of that nastiness on the edges and I would bring it down on the top but there's a lot of cool nebulosity up there and I think it's you know I'd rather just have that there um, so we're just gonna leave that and then a check mark and now our picture is cropped uh, once again go back to zoom it's just one of my things I like it to be full screen so fit onto screen um, but now what we need to do is blend these layers there's a couple different ways we can do this the super easy way is to click on the new layer, the starless one, go to the opacity, and just drop it down to about 50%. Now that will work sometimes, and that doesn't look too terribly bad, but there's sometimes you'll find that, that when you do that, um, the stars look a little muted compared to everything else, and it just doesn't look right so we're going to go back up to 100 percent this one we're going to try the other way to do it click on that layer again the starless layer um, now we're going to click on how how these levels blend themselves together and we'll just go through some of these some of these are going to look really bad but we might find one that looks good so we'll try this dissolve and it doesn't really look like much darken Ugh. Ugh. these are just getting worse and worse I bet there's one in here that looks pretty... That doesn't even look like anything. Ah, yeah, that looks like somebody clipped the blacks. That's that's what a noob process photo right there would look like. Um, let's see, we got this... That's not looking too bad. So we got the screen there. Uh, color dodge, yeah. Linear dodge. 
not too bad. And now this is all going to be subjective too. I, some of these things I, I think look bad. You might think they look good and you can sure use them. It's all up to you. But we're just going to go through these to see which ones look the best. Soft light. Now that, to me, that's looking pretty good. Hard light. No. 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 Ugh. What is going on here? Yeah, these are just pretty awful, huh? All right, so, yeah, I just wanted to scroll through all of them real fast, but uh, soft light for me, I think that looks pretty damn good. So we're going to click soft light, and that's how we're going to blend those together. And now we can try to adjust the levels one last time. They look pretty good, but I am going to bring this midpoint up just a smidge and hit OK. And just for the fun of it, let's try one curve stretch all together just to see what what it will happen try an extreme one new just bring that down just a little bit and right here we're gonna drop that now that looks pretty good to me I think that's about as good as we're gonna get um, with this data so we're gonna make our point drop that down again you see that right over here the right side is staying off the highlights so okay and i think that is going to do it so there we go uh next next step is layer flatten image file export as you want to go with the jpeg for posting on social media of course here we are it's at 22.5 megs small enough to post on facebook or instagram or whatever and export and there you go that is how you process a astro photo when you don't really know what you're doing